Launceston wraps around the banks of the Kanamaluka, an estuary that starts at the confluence of two rivers. It has always been a meeting ground, an area where people came together. First, for the island's Aboriginal people, whose various clans followed the seasons and met on the banks to trade. And now, for an emerging food and beverage culture that has seen Launceston named the UNESCO City of Gastronomy. What better place to call home for the Startup Bootcamp Food Innovation Program than here? Tasmania and its beautiful cities have the best conditions for growing food and wine, some of the cleanest air on the planet, and the first of all the Australian states to become carbon negative. This is where the opportunity lies. In bringing together one of the world's richest agricultural conditions and food industries with modern technology to transform the way we feed our growing population. The 10 early stage startups in the Food Innovation Program are each committed to create a circular economy for the food industry in Tasmania, Australia, and abroad. These passionate founders have been working to validate their solutions, connect with the local ecosystem, and grow their startups to impact the industry. Presenting the 10 startups showcasing their solutions. Welcome to Demo Day, celebrating the growing Tasmanian food innovation ecosystem. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Barlow and I'm the Food Innovation Partner at Startup Bootcamp Australia. And I will be your host for today. To begin our event, I'd like to introduce Melissa Carter. Melissa is an Aboriginal woman and descendant of the Parabina Trawulwe clans of the northeastern Tasmania and Oyster Bay. Over to you, Melissa. Thank you, Anna. Ya palingana. welcome all. I am a Parabina Trawulwe woman who is a direct descendant of our ancestral grandfather, Manalagena. My ancestors and family lineage comes from the northeastern Tasmanian nation as well as the Oyster Bay clan. Whenever I give welcome, I need to locate us in a part of Trawana, Tasmania, upon land that traditionally made up one of the nine nations and the many clan groups that live within country for 2,000 generations. In doing so, I ask that you extend your imaginations beyond the walls of this meeting space. Here we stand upon the land of one of the three clans that made up the Stony Creek Nation. This nation was extensive and ran from lands from the east and west of the Karnamalukaka, the Tamar River, and followed natural boundaries and tributaries down to the Midlands around Campbelltown. As a Tasmanian Aboriginal person, I stand here as a custodian of this country because there are no known descendants of the Paninaher, Lita Merina, or Taira Notapana peoples today. Regardless, that deep history, archaeology, and connection are still present. What was then is now. Throughout millennia, at least 40,000 years, cultural practices were interwoven with lives marked by seasons. Our physical and spiritual worlds intimately connected to each other as people, country, sea, sky, and ancestors. From that deep history of Trawana, men, women, and children ate plant foods that they gathered, harvesting various types of shellfish from the sea, and hunting was a necessary skill set practiced by men and women to provide meat for the meal. Food was shared as part of the nourishment and nurture of the clans. It was shared by people sitting together, talking, sharing their stories and experiences. These basic threads that held us together then can be just as relatable today as we, as we sit around at, at dinner tables, eating a meal and talking. What was then is now. The current day contribution of our culture includes sharing food. My ancestral organisation, Melitina Tiakana Warana, hosts a cultural event in Tebrakuna country, otherwise known as Cape Portland, 
and an integral part of the cultural practices that we highlight on that day is the foods we provide for everyone attending. Taster plates of wallaby patties, mutton birds, mutton fish or abalone, Cape Barren goose, crayfish, salads with sprigs of samphire. After the full program of our celebration is done and many of the attendees have driven home, about 50 people who volunteered will line up for a cup of wallaby tail soup accompanied by a thick slice of freshly made damper. We sit in a large circle eating together and talk and debrief about how the day had gone. In other words, there's meaning in gathering to share a meal. It's soul food. Within this welcome, I honour the wisdom and knowledge of elders past and present as custodians of living Aboriginal culture and knowledges. I respectfully acknowledge Tasmanian Aboriginal communities and Aboriginal people in this gathering space and extend a warm welcome to everyone present who contributes to the evolving ways that programs and initiatives can en enhance our communities. Mina Yapalingana Nina Melitina Tiakna Warana. My welcome to you into the heart of this country. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa, for such a beautiful welcome. I'm very hungry now that I've heard about that sharing of food. Welcome, welcome, welcome. On behalf of Startup Bootcamp, I can tell you we are all extremely excited to welcome our guests joining here in the room in Tasmania and the hundreds watching around the world on the live stream to this, our inaugural Food Tech Tasmania Demo Day. Today is the culmination of many months, in fact, years of hard work. From the start of 2021, the Startup Bootcamp team scoured the globe, reviewing thousands of startups, conducting hundreds of meetings in order to end up with the 10 amazing global startups you'll be seeing today. To be here and present to you today, our startups have avoided hurricanes, typhoons, managed multiple international flights, transit visa challenges, only to be greeted with the weather system that is currently sitting above us in Launceston. Startup boot camp programs operate in innovation communities and there are literally hundreds of people that contribute today. Today, as we reach the final day of the program, I first would like to ex extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guest, the local member for Bass, Minister Lara Alexander. I warmly welcome each and every one of you and particularly want to acknowledge the unwavering support of our fantastic program partners, the Tasmanian Government, Meat and Livestock Australia, Asahi Beverages, Treasury Wine Estates and our Demo Day partner, Taz Foods. I'd also like to thank our global partners, AWS, Stripe and Facet5. At Startup Bootcamp, our vision is to combat society's biggest problems through innovation. And we do this in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Our global values are to create, innovate and disrupt. Rather than sitting back and waiting for someone else to propose a solution to the issues that face the food sector, each of the startups you will hear from today have taken on the challenge themselves. We've learned that to thrive in business, it's all about being flexible, adaptable, and speeding up our response to change. In the food sector, the ability to respond to change has become incredibly important as our supply chains have been disrupted and not in a good way. Our population is continuing to grow and generate much more waste than we can deal with. And we're increasingly reminded that our food is the very best source of our health. Quite simply, our human race requires new technology and innovation to drive the change to help us better respond to these challenges. I'm particularly excited that we are hosting this program in Launceston, Tasmania, recently announced as a UNESCO Creative City of Gastronomy. With the cleanest air in the world, an immense variety of the highest quality produce from the horticulture, agriculture and aquaculture sectors. Tasmania is the ideal location for Startup Boot Camp's first Southern Hemisphere food tech accelerator. Launceston now takes the baton from Rome, where we ran our last food tech program. I would now like to invite our first keynote speaker, local member for Bass, Minister Lara Alexander, 
who is representing our Acting Premier of the State of Tasmania, Minister Ferguson, for his first keynote. Minister Ferguson sends his apologies. Due to the extreme weather conditions we're currently experiencing, he's required elsewhere today. Welcome, Lara. Thank you, Anna. Um, thank you very much for um, the opportunity of being here today. And all I can say is it's Michael's loss and my gain for being here. <laughs> um, my, my background, just quickly, um, having been sort of born in a different country in Eastern Europe, we do a lot of the looking after the food and uh, we don't like waste and everything um, is preserved, transformed. I think everything that moves grows and that gets preserved in some form or another, um, which some of the recipes I've shared with friends around over the years and they've all been fascinated of some of the um, final product that comes out of um, the preserving process. So um, I am very delighted and excited to be here today um, at the um, Startup Boot Camp Demonstration Day and um, especially for the Food and Agritech Startup Accelerator Program. Um, it's, it's an absolute delight. Um, again, we, we've referred to today and um, Launceston recently being named the UNESCO Creative City of Gastronomy. Uh, we, we feel, um, and of course me living in Launceston, I feel that it's a natural choice to actually host um, you and this amazing group of startups um, for the first of um, the three um, accelerated programs um, that are planned for Tasmania. And we're hoping that this will be a springboard for startups to come here to grow their business across the Asia Pacific. Uh, and um, this is also a unique way to assist our larger established Tasmanian based companies uh, to find form um, and form innovative partnerships and, and drive further innovation in different ways. Um, it is important um, to um, to say that exactly as um, Anne identified is food security and food safety is paramount and we've only seen it um, too well in the last two and a half years and the disruption of the food chain and disruption of distribution chains and everything. So being innovative and finding novel ways in which we can um, distribute our food and different ways in, in, in which we can nourish ourselves um, and also in the context of cost of living which again put, puts that pressure in um, how can we make it better, more efficient and ensure that a lot of, of people around the world have access to good food and good nutrients. So that is extremely important, um, especially I feel quite, as I said, um, um, Michael's loss and my, my gain for being here because I have been in a not-for-profit um, prior to joining um, politics and I'm very much... Um, for um, how can we help people and how can we find new and better ways to, to deliver that help. And food is one of those ways. Participants in Food Tech Tasmania um, underwent an exhaustive application process to be selected for the three months program, which started in mid-July. And they come from as far afield as Portugal, India, Canada, UK, USA, Kenya, Hong Kong and Norway. And unfortunately, I understand that the Kenyan... Um, person and winner has unfortunately not been able to be here today with us. Um, with the overarching themes of circular economy, functional ingredients, fermentation and advances in food, aqua and agritech, the startups support Tasmania's key development and innovation initiatives in this sector. These 10 startups are forming great relationships with our state and are yielding great results. We have seen the emerging relationships being formed with Tasmania businesses, customers and suppliers. The program is potentially creating new industries or growing emerging ones as the startups develop their ideas with a view to taking them to market. They have been mentored by industry leaders and received tailored support from experienced entrepreneurs, investors and partners to make their business dream a reality. We are very, very keen to continue to have that relationship here in Tasmania and to encourage as much innovation as you have seen from the presentation. We, we try to lead the best we can and, and in many ways I have always said that Tasmania has got a unique opportunity because the size of our state to be quite boutique and innovative and nimble in way in which we respond to so many pressures that we have seen happening around the world. So we are positioned very well, not only because of our produce, because of our clean and fresh air and everything else, 
but also we are very, very keen. And as you look around and take the opportunity to sort of engage with um, other people in the community, you'll find that spirit of entrepreneurship that has developed uh, lately. So thank you very much once again. Best of luck. And I'm really looking forward to see next year and the year after. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Minister Alexander, for those words. Our second keynote speaker is the CEO of Brand Tasmania, Todd Babiak. Unfortunately, he isn't with us in the room, but we do have a great recording of him, so he'll be joining us virtually. Hi, my name is Todd Babiak, and I work for you at Brand Tasmania. A few years ago, to figure out what makes this place so special from the point of view of Tasmanians, we just spoke to people. We spoke to hundreds of people, one-on-one, -on -one, to find out what it is about this place, personally, for them. And we heard a really consistent story from them that we summed up after hundreds of thousands of words into a single line. And we went story, uh, paragraph, line. And it's simple. The quiet pursuit of the extraordinary. Now, what do we mean by that and what does it mean for you? Uh, the quietness is interesting. A, a generation ago, almost all of this was negative. We weren't loud enough. The world didn't know about this place at the bottom of the world. And the pursuit bit wasn't positive either. The fact that we had to work harder for everything when it's easy on the mainland of Australia or easy in the big cities of the globalized world, that wasn't positive either. And being different wasn't something that Tasmanians broadly loved. Uh, they wanted to be like everyone else and felt they were mocked and misunderstood by the Australian media. And now fast forward to a time when quietness and stillness and humility in a loud and boastful world are actually pretty great, especially for our kinds of people. And having to work harder for everything, to be so inventive in an isolated place, to feel like good enough is never good enough. That grit and determination and creativity you need here creates some really special, not only people, but things, services, experiences. And then the extraordinariness, that differentness that was once something people were sometimes ashamed of. Well, that's a positive as well. Being different in a world that feels pretty samey uh, is a positive. And that's something we've really tried to hold on to at Brand Tasmania. And it's something that binds people like you who, who come to this place who think about this place and might want to make their lives here. And I hope you, you all are thinking that way. And the extraordinariness, that's the hardest part because Tasmanians don't love boasting. But it is true. Who you are and what you create in this special place, special people, special things, special place, this is something that we can celebrate. As well, there's a collective decision, something really special, something extraordinary about building the assets you needed to create what we have now, which is 100% self-sufficiency and renewable electricity. We have one of the cleanest grids in the world at the time where everyone in the world is looking for it. And we don't have to look to 2040 to be net zero. We're net zero today. Uh, so the, for the sorts of people who are looking to uh, figure out how to live in a world where climate is so important, Tasmania, we can be a workshop. And I'm glad all of you are thinking about being uh, entrepreneurs, getting into the world of startups at this beautiful time in Tasmanian history. You've chosen well. And I'm sorry, so sorry I can't be there in person, uh, but I hope I can be there in spirit and cheer you on. Uh, thanks very much and have a lovely evening. Thank you, Todd. I certainly think the cohort we will be hearing from today is full of extraordinary founders that agree that the quiet pursuit of the extraordinary very accurately describes this special place and its people. The current challenges of the food sector may seem daunting. Where some see challenges, our extraordinary founders see opportunity. From the circular economy, new and exciting fermentation technology, tasty and effective functional foods and ingredients, through to technologies driving efficiency, traceability and sustainability, in the food, aqua and agri sectors, these great companies are solving real industry issues in new and better ways. Over the past three months, our 10 food tech startups have been testing their concepts 
and validating their businesses in the Australian and broader Asia Pacific market. It's now time to hear from the startups as they pitch to you, our partners, mentors, investors, family and friends. Please join us in welcoming to the stage Kate Daly to introduce the first startup from our Food Tech Tasmania 2022 cohort. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'm Kate Daly, CEO of Pure Feeds Eggs, um, Tasmania's largest whole egg producer. Tomorrow is International Egg Day. So tomorrow when you're having your breakfast, I want you to think really deeply um, about the significance of this next startup that I'm going to introduce to you. Uh, Tas oh, I was going to say Tasmanians, so but Australians on average eat 250 eggs a year, which is the equivalent of around 17 million per day. Our farm here in Longford produces around 48 million eggs um, per, per annum, and about 5% of those eggs go to waste. And I'm really proud to, uh, to introduce to you today Andrea Romero of Tummy Yummy um, and her probiotic egg products because I think it has the opportunity to revolutionise not only the humble egg that we eat and appreciate every day, but also um, health benefits for both humans and our fairy little friends. Well, <laughs> welcome from New Mexico. Tummy yummy. What if you could cure depression, disease, allergies, or the common cold by eating just one egg a day? I'm Andrea Romero, founder and CEO of Tummy Yummy Probiotic Eggs. We've seen growing challenges in the fight against disease, allergies, and depression, and the stressful demands of everyday life. Being able to fight off ordinary ailments should be easy, but it's become difficult due to the health washing brands and fads with ineffective solutions. If we do nothing about making better health decisions, we sadly know what to expect. Increased risk of diabetes, poor health, exhaustion, and who knows what comes next. But as most of you are aware, probiotics have grown to become a necessary solution to a common problem. Gut health is where we derive our immunity and we're growing to understand it centers around our mental health. Tummy Yummy has developed pro probiotic eggs to deliver a delicious, affordable, and ubiquitous so food solution to making easier decisions about eating the right thing at least once a day. Our eggs taste, look, and cook just like a normal egg in all of its forms, except it's better. Our benefits are clear. We infuse probiotic strains into the eggs that strengthen immunity and support the function of the gut, the mechanism that supports our well-being. So without a probiotic egg, we're stuck with industry egg waste, sometimes sour yogurts, probiotic pills, and often not so delicious fermented foods. But with probiotic eggs, we have a super convenient delivery system of engaging our customers through everything that contains eggs, ice cream, mayonnaise, baked goods, and eggs. We love eggs. Beyond everyday foods, we utilize eggs to deliver the prevention of disease, allergies, and the foundations of our immunity altogether. The gut is where we're seeing long-term studies show that when we focus on the bacterial activity that we carry with us, the focus on that function of what we eat can be more important than anything else we decide to do every single day. Since university, my focus of curiosity has leaned deep into the demands of better health and benefiting our ecosystems that support our food supply chains. And after failing as an ostrich farmer and learning a lot about large eggs, I pivoted toward improving everyday foods we eat, and eggs are the perfect foundation. In partnership with just one medium-sized egg company, we create a new value with 250,000 dozen eggs that currently cannot be sold in the market annually, now upcycled by Tummy Yummy to create value-added products. We believe probiotic eggs can become the backbone of better health, but we can't do it without egg eaters, bioscientists, nutritionists, and the egg industry, and investors, which help us support us doing better. Supporting better health outcomes through beneficial solutions is something we must do, can do, and will do to, to better the lives of millions or even billions of egg eaters across the globe. Join us in the fight to defend our health and eat what brings us egg static joy. Great foods. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Baker. I'm Executive Director of Northern Cities with the Office of the Coordinator General. Uh, the Office of the Coordinator General has been supporting Startup Boot Camp in, in Tasmania. It's been my pleasure to be a small part of that. When I first went through the list of startups, I thought they were all amazing. They all have such interesting stories to tell, whether that is their innovative product or their personal stories as entrepreneurs. But I was particularly captured by Freshbox product and John's entrepreneurial story. John founded a Kenyan-based startup that uses sustainable solar power to keep perishables fresher for longer, reducing waste and increasing quality and profits. It takes a cooperative approach by renting out space within the walk-in refrigerated containers to multiple users. And it's making a real difference to people's lives, whether that's the business owner seeing greater profitability or consumers accessing better quality produce for longer. John's startup not only has application across the four East African countries he operates in, but you can see its potential benefits in farmers markets, community gardens and social enterprises. For Launceston as a city of gastronomy that values cooperation and working together, and for Tassie more broadly, where we pride ourselves on sustainability, the links are really exciting. Unfortunately, John couldn't be here in person, but we welcome him online to tell you more about Freshbox. From Nairobi, Kenya, Freshbox. Hi there. My name is John Bindia. I'm the founder and CEO of Freshbox. Freshbox envisions a world where food waste is minimized across the food supply chain. Over 40% of fresh produce is spoiled from the point of production to consumption, majorly due to climate conditions, as well as poor post-harvest handling processes. This results in losses for our fresh produce farmers and market vendors, as well as lack of nutritious meals on our tables. The problem is huge. Over 2.6 billion people rely on agriculture as a source of their livelihoods. This translates to 60 million fresh produce market vendors and farmers in Africa. The time to act is now. Freshbox tackles this problem in a localized context. We design, manufacture, and install solar-powered cold storage units, and these units are installed in farms, markets, and aggregator points. We then rent out space in the units for as low as 50 cents per crate per day of storage, making our service affordable even for the small-scale farmer down in the village. By use of our service, we've seen an increase of up to 35% in farmer or market vendor income and a reduction of up to 40% of food or fresh produce that would have been spoiled. For the last four years, we've installed 36 units spread across four different countries. These are Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, and Somalia. And we've served over 2,700 farmers and saving thousands of spoilage. We empower women and youth to run and manage our units. This provides an extra income for them. By use of solar as a source of energy, we are reducing on greenhouse gases emission. We have a team that has worked through the last four years and accomplished a lot, but a lot is yet to be done. We've gotten recognition from renowned worldwide organizations, and we are currently raising a round of $500,000 this will enable us to serve an additional 5,000 farmers and to make our solution reach the farthest of this globe. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Landman, Sustainability and Business Development Manager at North Kuskuk, Australasia. For those that might not know who we are, we're a global pulp and paper company headquartered in Norway. We've got five business units um, with, in four different countries, and one of those being the Boyer Mill in southern Tasmania. And we're now the last remaining publication paper producer in Australia. Our business has historically been publication paper grade based. Yet we're working hard to further diversify our traditional business and on the circular economy through improving waste utilisation, bioenergy and bio-based product developments. Pulp and paper processes can produce a large amount of solid organic waste, 
uh, commonly burned for energy or landfilled. However, these waste streams can and should be considered as a valuable resource where viable beneficial uses are identified. Around 10 years ago, we diverted 100% of such material from the Boyer Mill away from landfill to horticultural applications, uh, such as composting and regeneration of unproductive land within 30 kilometres of our site. Beyond this, however, most options we've explored have not been commercially viable. Our next startup has potentially found a solution to this challenge, while simultaneously improving environmental outcomes, reducing carbon emissions and adding to the circular economy. It's my pleasure to introduce and welcome Pedro Carrero from AgriStar Bio to present to you today. From Lisbon, Portugal, AgriStar Bio. Hi, I'm Pedro Carreiro, co-founder of Agristar Bio. No? Okay. So, again, the world is desperate for more sustainable agriculture. The farmer is faced with degraded soils, and uh, climate change, the waste producer is faced with a significant problem for which he does not find an effective solution, and uh, the environment is suffering from contamination of greenhouse and greenhouse gas emissions. To solve this, uh, okay, uh, we take the organic waste to produce an organic mineral fertilizer, recycling all organic matter and nutrients in it, in small facilities without greenhouse gas emissions, no subproducts, and in less than three hours in a circular economy way. The, sorry. the fertilizer we produce is unique because of its high organic matter content, low nutrient loss, low salinity and acidity that it puts on the soil, and it's a promoter of microbiology. On top, we can do the nutrients in a customized way to balance the nutrients, so it's uh, adequate for different kinds of crops and different kinds of soils. The fertilizer is 50, 65% recycled, and as, the, as so, it contributes significantly to the reduction of carbon footprint while producing it, and we, hit spot on on at least six of the UN sustainability goals. So the farmer gets healthier, more productive soil and customized formulas. The waste producer faces no more uncertainty at a competitive cost and the environment thanks us for protecting water, uh, soil and atmosphere. The, the market we are addressing is worth somewhere around 20 billion euros, but we are targeting around 3.6. Um, Australia is a very interesting market for us because of the development in the livestock and agriculture industries and the consciousness around environmental aspects. So it's a perfect market for a technology like ours. Our business model is simple. We build and operate the units, we sell fertilizers and charge a small waste management fee, and we use the long-term contract as collateral for the capex and the working capital that we support. Okay. Okay. In terms of traction, we have signed a contract to, to produce 10,000 tons of fertilizer from paper pulp, but our Pipeline now is more than 10 times that from different sources of organic waste in different countries and even continents. And we have just received a grant to build the first unit in, in Portugal and looking forward to build other units. Okay. Um, okay. We are, the core team is made of uh, four people, two from engineering backgrounds, two from management, very complementary. Uh, we're also supported by agronomic institutes, uh, collabs that help us develop the fertilizer and testing it. Uh, we also have advisory boards that 
bring us to uh, help us in terms of defining strategy, but we are looking for more people to complement our knowledge base. Okay. We are raising two and a half to three million euros to use mostly in marketing and sales, also in some part of CapEx and growing the, the team. Our goal for next year is to have the first unit working in Portugal and in the second year build up the second unit. To close, uh, we are Agristar Bio, making productive agriculture sustainable now. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Jean Kate. I um, head up product innovation at Treasury Wine Estates. Did you know that every vintage, um, uh, Treasury and other large wine operations produce tens of thousands of tons of organic uh, waste? Uh, and the largest constitu constituent of this is what we call a grape mark, um, which uh, is really the, um, the leftover skin seeds and stalks after pressing the grape. And we are always looking for creative things to do with this uh, mark, otherwise it becomes a, a just another fruit waste stream. Um, we're, we're particularly keen on how to um, tap into the healthy goodness in the skins and uh, create valuable products. I have been very pleased to um, be mentoring one of our cohort uh, this year, and they appear to have found a way uh, to convert this grape mark into healthy, um, healthy or uh, better for you products and, and health ingredients. And to tell us more about this, I'm uh, very pleased to introduce you to Clever Fruit Products and their CEO and founder, Sean Sears. From Nova Scotia, Canada, Clever Fruit. Thank you, Sean. We've all lost someone to a cancer, to a heart attack, or to some illness. What if you could just put a stop to that? I'm not suggesting that Clever has a cure for any of these things, but what if we could help by stopping the start of these diseases? Our uh, Western diet is killing us, creating serious digestive um, issues. We've all heard of probiotics. We use these good bacteria to ferment our food and bring out its nutrients. A critical class of items that fermentation creates are called pro postbiotics, not probiotics. Here's the issue. When our digestive system gets clogged, uh, when our body gets out of balance, we just don't produce enough of these. So Clever does that fermentation outside the body, and it supplies the probiotics, the postbiotics necessary for the body to get back into balance. Um, and so we are solving, we not only do that, but we are able to solve the problem of why the body got out of balance in the first place. So we're solving the immediate problem, and we're solving the underlying problem. This is um, the wild blueberry from Nova Scotia, my, my home community. It's the number one super fruit in the world. The fruit you choose, uh, we, use, we use fruit for two reasons. Uh, fruit has the most goodness of any plant product there is, and it's the easiest to extract. It's harder to do that with a the, with the plant. We have um, been working on our R&D for four years, and now we are um, on a product roadmap that starts with functional drinks and then moves to uh, supplement and nutraceuticals. The functional drink market is about $46 billion at a 9% growth rate. And the, the um, functional food ingredient nutraceutical marketplace is about $300 billion marketplace. So they're, they're very big. We have um, targeted a numerous nutraceuticals. Uh, we, we link uh, various super fruits to these with existing health claims to these nutraceuticals. We've developed two of these quite extensively. Uh, our um, cholesterol product and our blood pressure product are, would be number one products in the world. We're in Tasmania because we call it a fruit capital. It has all the things we need to be able to execute our business plan already here. I guess it comes from your self-sufficiency. 
We have targeted 22. There's hundreds of fruit capitals around the world. We've targeted 22 of them. Uh, our expectation is to operate in eight. The great thing about our product, maybe the cool thing about our product, is we can make it all from fruit waste. The skin is the value of the fruit, and we could just, uh, 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 that fruit mark that Jean spoke to, we can make a beautiful nutraceutical from. This is our team. Um, I've, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have nine exits. Um, I've worked with all these people before. Uh, it's kind of like an all-star team of people from past um, experience with me, and it's been an exciting trip so far. Um, really because of SBC and because of this food tech challenge, we know exactly what our metrics are and what we need to do to achieve that. We weren't, that wasn't clear 12, 12 weeks ago. And we're really at the dawn of a new world. Um, you know, Clever plays in a much uh, a pool of a much bigger thing. Food as a medicine has arrived. And, um, and so uh, as we think about the future, we think about, and I invite you to join Team Clever Fruit. You know, it's, our expectation is that uh, we will be able to uh, give people products that stop uh, diseases from starting inside of them and that we'll be able to redefine the uh, definition of an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And we'll be able to do that from the apple aisle. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kim Seagram, co-founder and chair of Ferment Tasmania. Bacteria are biological workhorses that through fermentation manufacture the drugs and chemicals we use every day and ferment many of the diverse foods we have eaten for eons. Today, fermentation is also being used in creative ways that will not only help solve global environmental problems, but also offer commercially sustainable food solutions for everything from humans to livestock to pets. I'm pleased to introduce Russell Howard, one of the founders and chair of Nova Nutrients, to share how this vision will be realized. Russell. From Silicon Valley, USA, Nova Nutrients. Good afternoon. Nova Nutrients is attacking two giant problems. Too much CO2 released and not enough protein to feed the world. Nova Nutrients bacteria create value from CO2 and renewable energy. Uh, we will capture gigatons of CO2 and convert it into highly valuable protein for feed and food. Our bacteria capture CO2 use it for their bodies, and together with the energy of hydrogen, divide and reproduce, producing biomass. The biomass is the bacteria, is the product. Our bacteria are safe to eat, just like the bacteria you have eaten in dairy, soy, and cheese products. We make beef quality protein at the price of soy. We will enter four different multi-billion dollar ingredient markets. We tested our aquaculture protein ingredient with protein with uh, rainbow trout, equaling the conventional growth rate of those animals. Our protein has been approved by Japanese regulators for broad use, including use in fish and pets. When we mix 20% of Nova Nutrients protein into a commercial plant-based burger shown on the right, it tastes better. Our protein will be a high-value protein ingredient mixed with or even replacing many plant and animal proteins in diverse food products. Our, protein can also, our platform can also deliver nutraceuticals or additives shown on the top right, additional very high-value products. Upstream, initial investment in scale-up of our technology and in technology de-risking will be paid through partnerships with CO2 emitters, emitters who urgently need to capture CO2. We've signed a term sheet with a global energy company who plans a series of integrated projects to reach commercial scale with us. Downstream, 
We're in advanced discussions with a Japanese conglomerate for project funding and distribution, and we're sharing product for testing with Scretting, a leading European aquaculture company, and with a global Asia-based company for feed and food. We're fundraising to continue running our pilot, to complete detailed engineering and finalize 100% partner funding of a commercial demonstration plant, and third, to establish additional upstream and downstream partnerships for large commercial projects. Australia has multiple industries with scale and urgent need for carbon capture. And Australia will develop abundant solar, wind and hydro resources to generate low cost green or clean hydrogen via electrolysis. Australia and particularly Tasmania will become a high value user and exporter of multiple alternative protein products. I look forward in the networking session to meeting you and sharing more about our path to capture gigatons of CO2 and make high value protein to feed the world. And I look forward to speaking with you particularly if you are an industrial emitter of CO2, if you're involved in feed or food manufacture, if you're a climate tech investor, a Tasmanian researcher in feed or food development, or involved in policy for hydrogen and CO2. Thank you. What an incredible kickoff. Please give a round of applause to all the five startups that have just given us all a dose of inspiration. My name is Ayushri Paliwal and I am the Food Tech Tasmania Program Manager. Before we hear from the final five and move to the networking session, I would like you to introduce Mr. John Perry, Coordinator General, Tasmanian Government, as a keynote speaker to share a few words. Hi there, everyone. Um, so I would have loved to have been there, regardless of the inclement weather that um, Tasmania is about to experience. But unfortunately, um, I'm overseas with the Tasmanian Government Trade and Investment Mission in Southeast Asia. However, I have been able to take time out and watch online from afar, and I'm really thrilled to be able to join this demo day. Our office, the Office of the Coordinator General, has been working on this concept for a long time. In fact, like so many things, our plans were significantly interrupted by COVID, but it's thrilling to see the program um, delivered and to be such a success. Our office does three things, and one of those things is focus on investment attraction. And our investment attraction is often around big businesses, big balance sheets, and lots of, um, lots of employees. This accelerator program comes at the investment attraction piece from the other end of the spectrum, but also providing plenty of opportunities for larger companies, as we've seen some of the partnerships today, through partnerships or investment. It's asking what are the gaps in the market and the emerging opportunities that a fledgling idea or a nascent business can fill. And it's helping Tasmania be part of the vanguard of, of solving those issues and filling those needs. Terrific to see these wonderful startups working and learning in Launceston and online and at our wonderful enterprise space. We're really very proud of what we've delivered there and where local, national and international startups have come together to share ideas and resources. And we've been really pleased to get such positive feedback about our startup facilities in Tasmania. We know that the startups have engaged deeply with accelerator programs and with the, with the program itself and with the business community across the state. We've already seen some great collaborations and we've seen some fantastic opportunities developed and some of our experienced business people as well assisting in mentoring and helping and building relationships and customers. It's our deep hope that these startups will continue to deepen their relationship with Tasmania, be that product refinement, customer development, business partnerships, and of course, a physical presence in what we consider to be one of the most amazing places uh, in the world. Congratulations to all the startups and the Startup Bootcamp, particularly to Annabalo, and we look forward to many successes from this year's program 
and to great success from our programs in 2023, 2024 and well beyond. Thanks everybody. G'day everyone, it's been pretty awesome so far, yeah? Big round of applause for everyone, yep. Really like to thank John Perry for his support of this program and a really strong catalyst uh, to getting um, the Food Tech program up and running here. And <clears throat> I want to expend, extend my personal thanks to the Tasmanian government uh, to help us run the Food Tech program here in Launceston. We see a huge opportunity to create tech innovation alongside the abundant natural resources and the, in the, what the, this beautiful state has to offer. We live in a world of turmoil, turmoil and constant change. And we all know that change is the only constant. With interest rates rising, recessions looming around the world, capital markets in freefall, free fall, the thought of working with startups, early stage companies, might seem both risky and daunting to some. But according to the leading investment firm in early stage investments, ARK Invest, we're only at the start of this. Innovation is not a bubble, but rather innovation solves problems that is expected to transform human lives at an ever accelerating rate over the next five to 10 years. Our vision at Startup Bootcamp is to combat society's biggest problems through innovation in alignment with the sustainable development goals. And we do this by empowering these innovators to combat society's biggest problems through innovation. And we do it by empowering them with the right mindset, skill set and tool set to achieve success. And we also encourage government, corporates and investors to lean in to the innovation process. Our mission is to create impactful breakthrough innovation. Innovation is impactful when it creates meaningful change. It is founded on invention or research and development, but it is much more than that. To innovate is to introduce something new to the market, to manipulate existing inventions and turn them into products and services that is of use in the real world. And we think about breakthrough in terms of challenging the status quo, to look at different ways of doing things, to create meaningful change, to refine a value chain, to get new products to customers. It's about getting something commercialised, getting a solution into the market through constant refinement and experimentation. And that's what we do with the startup through our program. It takes both technology but also business models to get solutions commercialised and into the hands of consumers and embedded into supply chain. Innovation needs to break through the inertia and resistance to change in order to make an impact. And we seek to make impactful innovations. We look at all our innovations programs through the lens of the Sustainable Development Goals, as this provides a solid framework to ensure that innovation we support improves society across all dimensions of environmental, societal and governance. To ensure that we're not only creating prosperity for the startup founders, their investors and their families, and growing the economy, but more importantly, to build the kind of society that we wish to live in. At Startup Bootcamp, we also looked at the direct impact that our programs have on individuals, ecosystems and communities in which we operate. We've brought economic activity to Launceston, supported local businesses, engaged with local entrepreneurs, investors, the business community, and help Enterprise TAS with the growth of the local startup community. However, it is the impact upon the startup founders and their lives that really bring the most reward from our work. We are humbled to work with such great founders who are putting everything on the line for their business and have put the faith in our team and process. We thank you for the faith that you've put in us and we assure you, as part of the Startup Bootcamp family, we're here to help you build your future, you build your business into the future. They've also put their faith 
into the Tasmanian ecosystem and the state of Tasmania. So please do all you can to help them on their journey and to bring a sustainable breakthrough innovation to life. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. To recognize the chance these founders have taken, I really can't wait to see what these founders have in store for you all next. We will now hear from five other startups of how they are innovating the food ecosystem with their robust solutions. I would now hand over to Jonathan Middies from Fight Food Waste to introduce our next startup. Hi everyone. Sorry I can't be there tonight. My name is Jonathan Middis and I'm the Innovation Manager at Fight Food Waste Limited. And we're working really hard to help Australia halve its food waste by 2030. Now, what's the best way to do this? Well, actually, that's not to make it at all in the first place. And through Food Tech Tasmania, we've met an amazing founder and her team that's using software to help companies better control their inventory and reduce loss and waste. You won't believe how much money you can save by doing this, and here to tell you all about it, I'm delighted to introduce Charlotte from Total Control. Thanks a lot. From Oslo, Norway, Total Control. used to say, oh well, Total Control can help you fix your inventory and save your hotel. <laughs> that is our jingle. So you'll be hearing more jingles throughout the day. My name is Charlotte, I'm the CEO and founder of Total Control. And we are here to help the food industry become more sustainable and profitable by providing them with total control over their food inventory from farm to fork. Now, you've all seen people throw away food because of expiration dates or just buying too much food. Well, one third of all the food that we produce every single year is wasted. In Australia alone, $40 billion of food is wasted every single year. Now, how smart is that? From working in the food industry since the age of 12, I've seen my share of food waste. And the main reasons for food waste are lack of control over inventory, expired products, and there's a lot of manual work involved with dealing with expiration dates, food waste, and inventory. Now, we are fixing this. We are transforming the food industry for the better by providing them with a tool that makes it easy for them to save time, money, and prevent food waste from happening. It's an amazing food inventory system. We make sure that they go from pen and paper to a digital solution, helping them save a lot of time. We're starting with the hospitality industry because it's in dire need of solutions to become more profitable and sustainable. We are preventing food waste by ensuring that they're notified prior to food expiring. It might seem simple, but it actually works. We've been able to show that our solution reduces food waste by 35% after one month in use. Now imagine doing that like this for Australia. It's $14 billion. Imagine sitting in a restaurant scanning a QR code, being able to see where your food has been produced and has traveled. Well, you can do that in our customers' restaurants and hotels. We make sure that our customers and their guests get last mile traceability and are able to comply with the upcoming and the current laws and regulations that they have to report on. Not only that, wouldn't it be nice if you could calculate your CO2 footprint so that you can make more sustainable choices? Well, you can, because we fix it. We provide our customers with a calculated carbon footprint so that they're able to minimize their uh, carbon footprint. Total Control is a four and a half year old company. And within those years, we received over 43 awards, or 43 awards. We're a certified B Corporation, meaning that we hold the highest standards of social and environmental impact. We're a leading food tech company. We're focused on food waste prevention, inventory management, and food traceability. 
we have this amazing team that is ready to scale into the Australian market. We're not looking for investment because we've just closed the round. And during this program, we've also closed partnerships and PUCs. What we're looking for, though, is hospitality customers, hotels and restaurants that are able to pioneer our solution in the Australian market, the ones that are able to become sustainable, profitable, and damn right amazing in a short amount of time. Come and visit me at my booth, and I'll tell you more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. Good evening. My name is Kirsty McCosh, uh, and I represent Asahi, Asahi Beverages today. The first time I met our next startup, the conversation went something along the lines of, you can eat chocolate, and it will reduce your stress and help you sleep. Now, as a full-time working sleep-deprived mum, it's fair to say he got my attention. I also I'm a self-confessed chocolate lover, having worked for Cadbury for a number of years. I have been impressed by his passion, his creativity, his openness to a different opinion, his willingness to take a chance, his worth ethic, but more importantly, the products themselves. They taste amazing, and I have to say, when I consumed the sleep product, I had the best night's sleep I'd had in ages. So I am delighted to introduce Pranav, to the stage, the co-founder of Awesome, Pranav. From New Delhi, India, Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Such a nice and awesome gathering here. So uh, I am Pranav. I'm the founder, CEO of a first of its kind, Ayurveda-inspired functional chocolate and confectionery brand, Awesome. We use the ancient old ancient old wisdom of Ayurveda, which is a preventive and a traditional medical science of India that prescribes the use of herbs and botanicals for preventive wellness. We combine it with decadent dark chocolate to create flavorsome nutritional supplements in form of guilt-free confectionery to rejuvenate and reawaken the good health. The journey with Awesome started with my own personal problem when I was struggling with stress, anxiety, and was not able to sleep well during the first lockdown. When I checked it with my other friends and colleagues, they also complained for the same problem. That's how we decided to build an exciting new age functional food and supplement brand targeting the millennials who are seeking solutions which are effective, simple, and tasty. Why Awesome? All our products are effective. We use clinically proven herbal blends. All our products are natural. They are all derived from plants and not made in plants. And in the end, they're all delightful. A chocolate any day is the most delightful thing. We are the first of its kind brand. We operate in three key categories. We have a therapeutic range of chocolate. We have a chocolate for men's health, women's health, a chocolate that puts you to sleep, and then a chocolate that makes you calm, and we call it as goodbye stress chocolate. We've also launched a range of first of its kind, high protein, zero sugar chocolate that comes blended with Ayurvedic herbs. So it's like eating and indulging in chocolate without the guilt of it. We also have recently launched a, uh, a range of bakery products in collaboration with Kerry, which is one of the world's largest nutraceutical ingredient manufacturer. And we are using a compound in it, which is clinically proven to enhance the body's immune response to fight against the external threat. Just think of it, you know, having a brownie and you don't have to, you know, pop up all those immunity boosting pills. Our revenue model comprises of selling our products through different sales channels. We have our own website. We sell through modern trade retail stores, hotel cafeterias, specialty centers and stores, corporate cafeterias, online marketplaces like Amazon. As far as now, we have been able to sell 50,000 chocolate bars uh, in last seven months since we've been operationally live. We have sold chocolates worth more than 95,000 US dollars in just last three months. And if we continue on the same trajectory, we foresee that by the end of quarter four of 2023, we'll be clocking a revenue number of 2 million US dollars. 
And, you know, I've spent some two months here in Australia, and I know that, you know, Aussies love chocolate. Eh? So eh, we, we are now planning to be in Australia the very next year from the uh, month of January. We have already had a distributor who is willing to help us de develop the market. We are in talks with a lot of chocolate manufacturers to figure out who will be the best fit for us. Now, to fuel our growth, we are looking to raise a million-dollar round, which will help us grow our business and explore new markets like Australia. And, you know, we are a team of 12 highly passionate, young, motivated people. We have people like Mukesh, Pooja, and Varun, who brings on board a vast uh, wellness and food and beverages experience that help us to grow. And in the end, I would, I would like to say that eat smart, move more, sleep right, laugh often, and deep breathe, because that makes you be and feel awesome. Thank you. Well done, Pranav. You've, you've actually nailed it. Australians love chocolate, eh? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm John Martin, Innovation Manager at Meat and Livestock Australia. I lead the product and packaging program, which invests in research and development projects that can help double the value of Australian red meat and ensure that Australian red meat remains a trusted source of protein globally. The Australian red meat industry, along with many others, has a high reliance on plastic to service its domestic and international customers. Much of this plastic is very challenging to recycle. Our next startup has taken on the plastic challenge through utilising agricultural waste streams and an uncompromising approach to ensure the sustainability of the start, use and end of a product's life. It is my great pleasure to introduce you all to Kashal Shah, founder and CEO of Envopap. From London, United Kingdom, Envopap. Good evening, everyone. Hello to all of those joining us online, and special love to my family tuning in from home. I'm Kaushal, founder of Envopap. Let me actually start by asking a question. How many of you all know of the impacts and challenges faced by farmers because of climate change across the world? Raise your hands, please. Wow. Wonderful. Excessive rains, droughts, floods, natural, many more natural calamities. These all are literally putting a lot of pressure on farmers across the world with not just income, no income, but a lot of, lot of income opportunities through that. And this is literally why I decided to start Envopap. Started at the age of 22 when I was pursuing my master's at the University of Southampton in the UK. And we are a UK-based business curating packaging solutions for the world's forward-thinking brands who believe sustainability is an integral part of their identity. And we all agree that using plastic and wood-based packaging solutions is really not helping Mother Nature. And simply at Envopap, using discarded agricultural fibers, which otherwise would have been burnt or dumped, we create innovative packaging solutions of the future today, whilst not just giving additional income to the farmers, but also making sure that the brands who use our products get the same durability, the same beautiful printing, and the strength to make sure that the packages are delivered to their customers across the world at a fraction of the environmental cost. Oh, shy. <laughs> so that's us. And next slide. So, farmers, yeah? I come from India, born in India, and being a farmer myself, you know, India's an agricultural powerhouse. But we have a massive issue of suicides simply because of excessive frames and climate change where incomes have been lost and farmers are dead burdened with a lot of expensive debt. And this is where indirect or direct impact of climate change on these farmers. And this is where, as a third generation entrepreneur of my family and a farmer myself, I decided to do something about it. At Envopap, we are building an ecosystem of entrepreneurs, suppliers, customers, stakeholders, researchers, and also investors who all believe that using waste and creating a material revolution. Moving on to plastic, I think we all agree plastic is detrimental to the environment. And more importantly, 
Since the 1950s, I wasn't even born then, but we've produced 8.3 billion tons of plastic. And believe me, today, the plastic industries have committed to 3x of their manufacturing capacity because in the pandemic, we all are blaming ourselves. We need to blame ourselves because we've doubled up usage of plastic. The 8.5 billion tons of plastic is actually equivalent to the weight of 800,000 Eiffel Towers. Wow, that's huge. Welcome to the future by Envopa. So using waste of sugarcane, wheat, rice, corn, maize, sarkanda, we've created some beautiful products for clients across the world, in, all the way from the print sector to the stationery to the e-commerce, retail, food, patisserie, and many more products where we're just getting started. But more importantly, our products have been certified by companies, leading inspection organizations, where we're reducing carbon footprint by 30%, just using a simple waste material. This is how we do it. It all starts with sourcing the waste. We work with farmers, mills, contractors, many other individual parties where we go and collect this waste from farmers so that we're giving them an additional service. But at the same time, we are the world's first company to be fair trade certified. We actually worked with fair trade to build up a model for the waste consumption for the packaging industry. Once these waste fibers are taken off, we blend them, add standard paper-making chemicals, and which are then pressed and dried on standard paper-making machines, which have used wood pulp or recycled pulp for making these products. Once these products are made, we supply to a lot of customers across the world, but more importantly, we give them a defined end of life. It can be recycled into making new paper. It can be biodegradable, marine degradable, making sure that no ocean life is being harmed, but at the same time, industrial and home compostable. So our products, literally, a customer can go, take a cab, go home, put some of their fruit and vegetables and put it in their home compost bin. And that's why we believe at the start and the end of life of our products. And we have recently been vegan certified as well because a lot of our customers asked us about vegan certification and food grade as well. So the next step, we are now laying the foundation to build up the world's first integrated carbon negative plant where we are being able to create e-commerce, food packaging, and many barrier products so that we can really replace single-use plastic items, like John said, in the meat packaging industry to the wine sector as well. And until now, in the last seven years, we have generated more than 25 million Aussie dollars by selling our products in 50 plus countries. We are a team across UK, Germany, and India. And we're looking forward to getting our technology to Australia. First, we're building up the market here. We've already got some customers, so it's been great traction. Once we've built a market, the next step is to get here our technology and use all the wheat waste we have, we've seen all across Australia. So if you want to join us, either by partnering, getting our products here, or if you're open to investment, we are open for investment right now. My stall is right outside. All the products you saw there, they're literally outside. So come, touch, feel, smell, do whatever you want, but it's all made by waste. Thank you. Um, I've been honoured to be an entrepreneur in residence during the Startup Bootcamp program. That title um, conjures up images of a life spent uh, lying in bean bags and eating three-minute noodles, but it has in fact been an invigorating ride where I've got to uh, meet, learn about and work with the various founders. The founder I have the pleasure to introduce has spent the last three months immersing himself in the Australian live animal transportation ecosystem and has settled so well into Lonnie that he has regularly been mistaken for a local. If ever you're trying to find him, try Banjo's first or ask the girls at the um, Gorilla Coffee Van. Since arriving in July, he has investigated the relevance of his technology solution across all types of live animal transportation in Tasmania, broader Australia, Singapore and the Philippines. Now to tell you all about it, please welcome Joel Sotomayor from Transport Genie. Welcome Joel from Transport Genie. Thank you, Ian. Hi, I'm Joel Sotomayor, President and CEO of Transport Genie, an award-winning company that's focused on solving food security issues through improved provenance and welfare to deliver higher quality products and increased economic value. We're solving this problem because livestock transportation is something that happens all over the world, but it's the only part of our food production system where there are no real-time sensors. And we need this to provide monitoring and also for situational awareness. When you think of the, the money spent on producing livestock, it makes no sense that we don't have a solution to solve this problem. 
In addition, these conditions reduce traceability and lower supply chain resilience. Why now? It's important to solve this problem right now because there are huge opportunities in this space. Precision monitoring is a $5.6 billion market. Consumers are demanding better traceability and food production has low margins, so anything that helps increase economic value should be used. And lastly, legislation will also drive adoption. So how do we solve these problems? We solve these problems by having temperature and humidity sensors, which are then placed within a trailer to monitor microclimate conditions. The data is then collected by a central computer, which we call a linked device, which is then sent to a cloud for AI processing and data logging and further analysis. Our customers are then able to understand what is going on inside the trailer in real time so they can react a lot quicker. Just back one slide. In terms of our traction and our go-to-market strategy, we've created northern and southern manufacturing hubs, um, one of them based here in Lonnie, to service our global customer base. We have global paying customers and we have local distribution partners and are strategically aligned with other technology partners in this space. In terms of our competition, we solve a lot of problems that these devices and uh, older solutions have and this adds to our unique value prop. Our revenue model is based on, our, on the sale of our award-winning sensor ecosystem that we provide solutions for data transformability, record dig digitization, and increased operational efficiencies. I've been in Tasmania since the start of the program, and the traction that we've obtained is a testament to our unique value prop. We're creating a Tassie entity, which uh, we hope to have between five to six full-time equivalents and we have partnered with key companies to help us gain traction velocity. In order to support our growing list of customers and orders, we're currently doing our first raise. We have a clean cap table and are looking for strategic partnerships and investors. We'll use these funds to hyper accelerate our market penetration, hire talent, grow our inventory to satisfy our current demands. This is our team. Ian has been a, a great inspiration and a help for me. And I've also been very lucky to have met many other people in the industry. Um, we have uh, Excel Poultry Systems and then Definium and Marlex and myself, Joel, a serial entrepreneur. Um, I have patents and awards and I'm very excited to be part of this ecosystem. Today may be you know, the, the epic uh, event for the program, but it's just the start of my journey here. And I'm happy to announce that I'll be back in January. and You'll see me soon. Thank you. Hi, all. Uh, my name is Tom Smith. I'm the Technical Director of Climate Australia. Uh, just for a little bit of context for those of you who don't know what we do, we manufacture about 100,000 tonnes of high-performance agriculture feed uh, each year. Uh, so sourcing sustainable ingredients is core to our business. It forms a, a really major part of our strategic goals in helping our customers produce healthy, tasty and sustainable seafood. Um, so we were tremendously excited when Food Tech Tasmania it helped us to find a team able to, to convert 170 kilotons of organic waste produced in Tasmania each year into sustainable insect protein that uh, we, are, we already know to be a valuable ingredient in agriculture feeds. Uh, and without this process, that, that waste otherwise is sitting in, in landfill and producing methane, carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, to tell you more about this uh, really exciting development, I'd, I'd like to welcome co-founder and serial entrepreneur, Constantina. From Hong Kong, Fly Farm. Hello, good evening, everyone. 
Um, as I'm the last uh, one to present, the only thing between you and the bar is me, so let's go. My name is Constant Tedden. I'm co-founder and CEO of Fly Farm. Our vision is for a world where pets, farm farmed fish, and poultry are fed with sustainable protein from insects reared on organic waste. The problems we are addressing are organic waste and the emissions and costs that it generates and the unsustainable supply of protein for growing pet food and aquafeed markets, as Tom says. There is a giant opportunity to recycle organic waste into protein using our solution, which combines nature and technology. The insect we grow is black soldier fly larvae, which is native to Australia and non-harmful. It's a super converter of organic waste with an incredibly high growth rate. Our products are insect protein meal, which is an ideal replacement protein for pet food and aquafeed. Insect oil, which is a highly digestible nutritional additive for pet food and animal feeds. And frass fertilizer, which is high in nitrogen with accessible minerals which can return to the land. Plus, for our customers and waste partners, we generate ESG benefits and carbon credits from the CO2 equivalent emissions that are abated and we contribute to the circular economy. Our markets, we are currently selling to pet food and aquafeed. There is immediate demand, as Tom says, for insect protein in the aquafeed sector for up to $56 million worth of product. And the market opportunity is $460 million in pet food. Our unique value proposition is our business model and rollout approach. Our modular technology enables us to co-locate our biorefineries alongside our waste partners, which leads to a, an efficient and scalable business model. Working with our waste partners, we are able to reduce waste-related waste emissions and costs and generate high-value products. The waste types we work with are on-farm waste, vegetable, fish, and meat processing waste, and food and beverage manufacturing waste. It's a hugely exciting time for Fly Farm, with accelerating velocity in Australia. We've proven our product with our customers. We are commercializing our demonstration plant in Brisbane. We are site scouting for our first commercial location in Tasmania, proudly working with our waste partner, CUB Asahi. Our current roadmap is to continue to invest in our demonstration plant to prove our latest robotics technology and develop new, new, new customers. To develop our first commercial site in Tasmania in 2023 to produce half a ton of insect meal a day. And to follow this with our second commercial plant in 2024, which will be eight times larger. So why us? Our team is a strong combination of experience and passion. Our aim is to become a global agritech business, making a big impact. I myself am a serial entrepreneur. I've scaled three businesses previously, firstly in computer games. Anyone here play RuneScape back in the day? As well as renewable energy and hospitality. My co-founder, Andres, is a highly experienced business manager who brings order to the chaos. And we have an incredible team of passionate engineers and biologists. There are lots of businesses with too much organic waste in the state. If you are from one of these businesses or know someone who is, please come and speak to me and find out about how we can help you do better with your waste. So, we have customers in Tasmania and the mainland. We can scale in Tasmania. Tasmania, let's do this. Thank you. That was sensational. Please give a round warm of applause for all the 10 startups. <laughs> that now concludes our pitching segment. Today we have heard from some of the best minds on disrupting the sustainable food innovation. Hi, and how they are contributing to it. Supporting the startups ecosystem is vital to creating the next groundbreaking solution for a sustainable future. So we encourage you to connect and collaborate with the starters after the event. We have organized a product showcase for you to meet the startups to taste, learn, and fully grasp the value and potential 
the products the startups have to offer. I'm sure it'll give you a fresh eyes to see how the Australian food ecosystem could be revolutionized. May I now present Anna Barlow to give her final words. You have now heard from all 10 of our amazing cohort, and I hope, like me, your brain is exploding with the possibilities the future these startups are creating. Their journeys are just beginning. From here, we look forward to following their progress as they grow and scale their businesses. These challenges facing the future of our food system affect us all, and it will take our collective effort to solve. This Sunday, the 16th of October, is World Food Day. These 10 startups are already well on their way, helping to ensure a sustainable world where everyone, everywhere, has regular access to enough nutritious food. Whether you're an investor, industry expert, or just know someone who can help, please reach out to our founders today and help in whatever way you can. With your assistance, they will have the best chance of making a real impact in the future of a sustainable food ecosystem. If you are in the room, please go and speak to the founders at their stands. If you are joining us online, you can connect to the startups by clicking on their logos, leaving questions, or clicking on the contact startup button. I'm reliably informed we've had over 700 viewers watching online today. As I said at the beginning, there are literally hundreds of people involved in the success of this program. I want to thank our fantastic team at SBC, our wonderful designers, the AV team, our operations, marketing and events team, SBC executive, especially Richard and Trevor. And finally, Ayushi, our food tech program manager. Thank you for all your hard work. Startup life can be tough and it takes a lot of resilience. It can be even harder when you're running your business from the other side of the world. Our founders have traveled very long distances away from their friends and family to be here in Launceston today. We extend our heartfelt thank you on behalf of the startups to their families and friends for their unwavering support. On behalf of Startup Bootcamp and our founders, I extend a huge thank you to our government and industry partners, mentors and limited partner investors, and finally to you for joining us in person or on our live stream. As we conclude the formal part of the event, I ask you to raise one more huge round of applause as I invite the founders and the Startup Bootcamp team to the stage. Come on up, guys. <laughs> those of you tuning in via the live stream, thank you and good night.